I'm Amber Harper from the Burned In Teacher Podcast and a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to episode 91 of the Google Teacher Tribe podcast, your source for the latest Google for Education news, tips, tricks, and ideas you can use in class tomorrow. I'm Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook. And I'm Casey Bell from Shake Up Learning. And in today's episode, we are going to jump in to add-ons. We are hitting the broad spectrum here of add-ons in our different G Suite applications that we all love and love to use. And we're going to learn how we can use these add-ons to do some additional things that are not built into the actual features of those apps, but give us some things that we need to do in our classrooms and beyond. And of course, there are always Google News and updates that we're going to share with you, as well as some feedback from our listeners in the mailbag, and of course, a couple of blog posts to share with you today. So Matt, are you ready to get this going? Yes, I am ready. Let's do it. All right, Tribe, as we get into our news and updates, we have a little bit more uh, Google Teacher Tribe news for you. We continue to get closer and closer to 1 million downloads. This is like super, super exciting. I know Casey and I are so pumped about this. Um, So we are closing in. We're within 20,000 downloads. So we're, we're really, really getting close. And we're still thinking about, you know... This is kind of a milestone. We're trying to figure out how we can celebrate with you all. So that is coming up pretty soon. For our news and updates, uh, I wanted to start out with an update that's coming to Hangouts Meet, and it has to do with live captions. So live captions is something that we've started to see roll out into several of the uh, G Suite products. You know, we we saw live captions in uh, Google Slides, where you can turn that on during present mode, and then they rolled it out into Meet. You know, Meet is kind of like the new uh, Hangouts, and so we've got um, we've got the live captions where it will uh, kind of like transcribe what's being said in the conversation and put it right on the screen, kind of like the the way that it worked with uh, slides. Only during video chats, you can do this, and so now they're rolling it out to Android too. So if you use Meet on an Android device, you want know, to tablet or smartphone or something. Uh, Now you should be able to tap the closed captions button in the top right hand corner of your meet app when you're in a meeting. Um, And of course, that's just for English language users. Um, There's the three dot menu for other languages if you're doing this in other languages, but you can continue to use it also in those video calls um, on your browser and on the web and of course still in Google Slides too. So it's it's a nice little uh, accessibility feature that they're continuing to roll out. I agree. I, I'm really excited that they are beginning to add these features. Of course, it was fantastic when we got it in Google Slides as well. But I'm trying not to laugh over here. So I have to tell you, as I'm listening to you say this, I'm adjusting to hearing it called Hangouts Meet in the first place, you know. But when I, I was like, he's talking about the Meet app, the Meet app. And it just, in my head, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> M-E-A-T. So yeah. my, the Meet! I don't know why. It's probably because we're recording on a Friday afternoon and my brain is fried. It's like, yeah, app, it's like, meat app. it's like we're, <laughs> we're going to the yeah, butcher it'll or deliver pork chops and ground beef and steaks right through your screen. <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be amazing. Yeah. Google get on that. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Get some fresh meat. Yes. Indoor, yes. Yeah. Yes. Indoor home. I do need to go to the grocery store and I need some protein. So that would there definitely help me yeah. out. So, um, yeah, sorry. No, I was like, I don't know. The meat app was just <laughs> standing out in my head. Oh, Casey, get it together. Okay. So we're going to move on now from our meat app to some improvements to Jamboard on mobile and tablet applications. So if you have not jumped on the Jamboard 
bandwagon just yet. It really has become a very robust tool and they are continuing to push out a lot of updates. I'm, I feel like Jamboard's been getting a lot of attention over the last year and they have redesigned the hardware that's on the web as well as the way the user experience works on the app. So, so in If you're using a phone or if you're using a tablet, you're going to see some additional features popping up. You're also going to see that it's going to be more consistent with what you see in other G Suite applications. For instance, you'll be able to star your jams, make a copy, and be able to organize it kind of like we get used to in Drive. So you're going to be able to see a more consistent and seamless experience as well as the functionalities that we can bring in some other editors. So they've got some screenshots here in the the updates blog where you can kind of see some of these new functionalities that they are popping in and they're trying to make it easier to share uh, as well. And that's, of course, to me, has always been the biggest selling Mm -hmm. point of anything Google is the sharing and collaboration feature. So you're going to be able to see a nice grid view and list for your jams on the home screen. You'll be able to see those recent shared with me starred and trash, just like we do in Drive. So you've also got a full portrait and landscape support now too. So I love that because I'm all the time flipping my devices around and trying to get the best view that I need. So anyway, if you are interested in learning more about this or the Meet app, we will have the links in our show notes for you as well. So um, Google Chrome, I know my um, my fabulous podcast co-host has this saying that if you're, I, correct me if I, I don't, I don't know if I'll get this exactly right, Casey, but it's something to the effect of if you're not, if you're not Uh-oh. using Chrome, then you're not doing it right or something like that. Maybe you didn't say that. I don't know. I like to ignore some of the uh, other browsers that are out right. there. Uh, we, we won't name any names, but some things that cause some problems. Yes, yes, exactly. So, um, you know, Google Chrome continues to get better. They continue to add new things to it. And we we do have some more Google Chrome features that are starting to roll out that you're going to be able to see this fall. And there's some pretty cool ones. Um so, for instance, if you use an Android mobile device, um, I am horrible because I've got a I've got a Pixel phone, and I'm horrible with uh, within Chrome. I don't close my tabs. My wife makes fun of me on this because she's got a Pixel also, and she'll she'll pick it up and she'll like oh she'll say oh you got 47 tabs open in your browser right and I'm like hey I wasn't even looking at it I didn't even know they were there well. Um, Chrome is changing that a little bit. There's a a better way to organize, drag around, and group all of your tabs on an Android device. They're going to be in kind of a grid view, and then you can group them together and then, um, of course, clear them off if you need to. So that that looks kind of cool. Um, How about this? If you use Chrome on a a laptop or a Chromebook or something... Um, if you've ever had open tabs itis and you have like a million tabs open and you can't read the titles, um, which I think is probably a lot of us that are listening to this, there's going to be new functionality where whenever you hover over one of the tabs, see right now for me, I can hover over a tab and if I sit on it for like three or four seconds, it's going to tell me what the title is. Well, Google's rolling out something to Chrome where when you hover over it, it immediately shows them. So you can kind of like, swipe over all of them and see all of those titles real quickly. So you know exactly what's going on. There's a couple of other ones in here that are cool, but this is this last one is the one that I've got to share with you. Raise your hand if you are guilty of emailing yourself a link so that you can remember to look at it later. (laughs) I've got my hand up. Good thing we can't see any hands. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So now Chrome is um, rolling out. This is something that I've had on my device through the labs, um, and I've really liked it. Um, they're, they're rolling out an option where you can use Chrome to send a tab to another computer, another phone, or another tablet where you're signed in. So if you're signed in to Google on another one of these devices, you can just send that, um, you can send that link right over to that other device, and boom, you're able to open it right up without copying, without emailing yourself or any of that stuff. So um, those are some of the cool features that you can start to see in Chrome this fall. I love it. Yes. I always have to remind everyone that if 
you're listening to this podcast and you're using Google and you're not using Google Chrome, you're missing out because Google works best with Google and all of these fantastic things that Matt just shared with us are going to help make your user experience even better. So love it. Love me some Google Chrome. Yes, I am a tab hoarder as well. <laughs> Fully confess, you can never count or read the tabs on my computer, but it's time to move on. So one thing that we're going to talk about today with add-ons was actually sparked by an update. And this update is about a new add-on that's available for Google Forms. We've had add-ons in Forms for a long time. And as you know, add-ons come and go. They are third-party applications most of the time. Sometimes Google makes them themselves, but they're going to give us an added feature that wasn't built into the platform. So for instance, in Forms, this is a new add-on published by Google Cloud. So this one is actually from Google and it's called Form Notifications Add-on. So if you read this and if you were thinking like I was, I was like, didn't we already have notifications? Right. So this is a little bit different. And I feel like this is going to replace some of the things that some of us have been doing even in our sheets and the sheets add-ons. So what it's going to do is once you install it and use the add-on, you'll be able to set up email notifications for once your Google form has been received by a set number of responses, or you can use it to send an automated follow-up email to any user who completes the form. So it's it's a little bit more robust than just that toggle button and that little email that we get. A user has submitted a form. So I think this is, again, sort of some of the things that I've been using like Autocrat for and some other things in Google Sheets, we're now going to be able to do inside Google Forms. So if anybody has tried it, it's it's brand new. It's available in the G Suite Marketplace now where you're going to find your add-ons. But I'd, I'd love to hear if you're using it and how you're using it. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is pretty cool. I'm starting to think of the workflows that we could create where if we're able to send an email to somebody immediately afterwards and... Um, You know, that's that's something that a lot of, you know, contact forms and other different things around the web do. It's nice to have that in Google. So, um, of course, you can get more information and links to everything we're talking about here, except for the Google Meet, M-E-A-T, because in case you missed it, that that's not a real thing yet. So, um, hashtag Google M E A T. Right. Exactly. But aside from that, if you want to learn about anything else that we've talked about here, you can head to the show notes at Google teacher tribe.com slash 91. Who's ready to talk about add-ons, right? You ready for some more? So we got a little sneak peek in our Google News and Updates, and Matt and I have some other add-ons that we want to share with you. In fact, we were digging around and looking for some new things. So these are not necessarily things that we are using every single day, but that we found interesting because it's always changing and evolving, and we want to make sure that you know about these things. So... I was digging around and I don't know how many of you have noticed the transition from where we get add-ons now. By the way, if you're a brand new user or new to add-ons, whenever you're in docs, sheets, slides, forms, you're going to look for the add-ons in the toolbar and forms. It's a little bit different, but you're going to go to get add-ons and it's going to give you this little pop-up store. That pop-up store technically used to exist in the Chrome Web Store, but they have shifted into the G Suite Marketplace. So it looks a little bit different if you haven't looked at it in a while. And I've also noticed something interesting. So I am the domain administrator for my own account, and I noticed that I now have two buttons on some of the add-ons, where I have the option to install for the entire domain or just individually. I also happen to come across one where I couldn't install it individually, only push it out on the domain. So um, just kind of an interesting shift. And those of you who are domain administrators may already be using this, but uh, it was just a new little button I hadn't paid attention to in a while. So thought I should mention that in case any of you are, are seeing this as well. 
So the first add-on I want to share, I'm going to stick with forms since we just were talking about the new forms notifications add-on and share with you one that is called form approvals. So a lot of us are using Google Forms to collect information, to even have applications and things like that online. Some of this may be student information that you're using, and you may have a system in place where you need certain approval before it moves on to the next stage. And that's what this is designed to do. So it's going to allow you to turn those form submissions into a work flow so that within your school, you can automate some of those processes. So if you have, say, a an application to get, um, maybe it's a Chrome extension installed or some kind of thing. I know a lot of schools sort of have some requests where teachers want those pushed out on Chromebooks. Well, maybe it has to go through a couple stages. Maybe it has to be submitted, somebody reviews it, and then you send it to your boss for approval. This is going to allow you to set up multiple recipients and the order Mm. in which they see it. So you can then take those actions. So I think this is pretty cool. And I think this is going to help a lot of those administrative tasks that some of even classroom teachers may be doing, but as well as coaches and uh, our tech directors and things like that that may be using. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. And yeah, if you're using forms to fill out a form and then, yeah, like it says here, get approval, this is this is really neat functionality that can, you know, make the process a little less clunky, I think. So um, I wanted to jump over to a slides add-on. Um, this is one that I just recently found. That I think there there could be some um, some pretty easy applications in the classroom. This one's called Slides Randomizer. It's not super groundbreaking, but um, the idea behind it I think could be useful. So basically what it does is it takes all of the slides in your slide presentation and it just randomizes them, shuffles them up. So, um, you know, if you have a whole bunch of uh, vocabulary words or something, it would be an easy way to shuffle them if you have them one per slide. Um, Something a little more, uh, you know, something that I think is a little more apt to happen is um, I think of the um, shared Google Slides presentations that we do sometimes where you get one slide presentation, each student gets a slide and um, they respond to a prompt or they put something on the slide so that within one slide presentation, everybody's got their own slide. Everybody has their own answer. Um, I could see that if you wanted to present those at the front of the class, it would be really easy to use slides randomizer to mix it up so that not everybody's going in the same order. Um, I could also see it when it comes to commenting. Um, You know, for me, when I used to do that kind of activity, I gave each of my students a number. I actually had it taped to the back of their seat so that, you know, it was always with them. And so if you randomize the slides, then you can say, okay, whoever's slide just popped up on your number, go look at what they've got and write a comment on it. So then it becomes really random. So I could see, you know, a variety of things coming out of this, just this little simple functionality. I I really like this. I almost wonder if you could use this as obstacle sticks, you know, Mm -hmm. just to call on kids. Yeah, just, you know, put a name on each slide. I don't know if you can tell it to oh, yeah. not choose the same one again. That would sort of be the the cool thing about that. But yeah, you definitely could do that. I'm even thinking of, I like visual writing prompts for students. So using an image to oh, yeah. start writing a story. And, you know, you could have that as like a warm up in the morning and today, okay, let's see, yeah. let's shuffle, let's see which one we're going to get today. Yeah. And, so, you know, like, along, along with that, you've got a couple of other add ons for slides. You know, you've got like um, Shutterstock and Unsplash and some of those other ones that have pictures. And so if you pulled some of those pictures in real easily, I mean, you could pretty much do that entire type of activity without even leaving Google Slides. So yeah, lots of, lots of add on possibilities here, I think. I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about the mail merge for Avery labels add-on for Google Docs. And the reason this is in my head, I think, (laughs) I think I remember someone tweeting about this going away or not working. And so I was looking for it and I found it. So I don't know if there was another one or if I might just be lying and making this up, but I thought somebody was having trouble with this. And, you know, 
there are a million reasons why we have to print labels, whether we're, you know, making name tags or we're um, sending out letters home or whatever it is we're doing. But these questions come up a lot, these more administrative types of tasks. So I'm very curious if someone has been missing this, if they have, have found it and if it's still working correctly, but it does allow you to merge the data from a Google sheet and produce those mass labels that are already formatted to print on whichever Avery, you know, brand of labels that you're using. So I know in my classroom, I was all the time making labels either to organize my classroom or or labels for folders or whatever it was that we were doing. So um, just wanted to mention that and make sure that everybody knew this was a possibility so you don't have to manually type everything in. Schools, if you imagine all of the the labels that we churn through as teachers with, you know, mailings out of the office and organization and everything. Yeah, this, this seems like a really good fit. So I'm going to switch to a, um, a tool that was actually created before the add-on was created for it and was pretty useful. This one's called Slido. Now, this could totally be used in the classroom with students. This could also be used really well, I think, with professional development. Because I know many of you that are in the tribe, you do professional development in one way, shape, or form. Either that's your job and you do it in a district, or you go to conferences or other professional development and you lead it. So with Slido, it's kind of like Slides Q&A, but it has a lot more features. You know, with Slides Q&A, you're able to put that little link and people can interact with your slides and send you questions and stuff. Well, Slido will do that, but it will also do some other things. For instance, it'll do polls. So with a poll, you can ask a multiple choice question, a rating, um, open text. You can even create word clouds um, and just have people do that through their devices. Um, You can crowdsource questions. You can even do this thing called brainstorm ideas, where you just put a blank slate out there and have people type in your ideas. Um, This is all pretty cool, and it integrates nicely with your... um, with your slides if you're actually doing a presentation. Now, Slido also has another feature that I really like. And P.S., all of this stuff is available through its free basic plan. Slido has this thing that they call the Slido Switcher. Now, if you've ever tried to jump between the Slides Q&A feature, which works really well on slides, and another slide presentation software, I'll give you an example. I do stuff on Keynote all the time. And if I want to use that Q&A feature, I've got to jump back and forth between the two. Slido has created this little app that lives on your computer that will let you switch between those two with a single click. So, and no more, you know, having to go find that browser and having to drag it over and it looks kind of clunky on the screen and everything. So, um, Slido has got a couple of really cool interactive, um, features that you can use with your slide presentations if you're doing them with students or if you're doing them in professional development. Let's transition to a Google docs add-on. And again, I'm picking something a little bit different, but something that I think helps a lot of teachers and that's Wolfram Alpha. And if you've never gone to the Wolfram Alpha website, it is fantastic, particularly for math and science. But this add-on in Docs will allow you to access Wolfram Alpha directly from the sidebar to pull in data, information, graphs, images, all kinds of things. And here's the catch. So as I mentioned earlier, we have noticed the transition from the add-on store, which technically was still the Chrome Web Store, to this G Suite Marketplace. When I looked for Wolfram Alpha, I don't find it in the new G Suite Marketplace. I can still access the old link and still install it. So I'm not completely sure if it just hasn't made it over. I know Google's sort of cleaning house as well when it comes to some add-ons. So um, if someone happens to know what's going on with this one, because I would hate to see teachers lose this ability. So it just offers so many features. And I love the fact that we don't have to open a new tab to go there. You know, when we open a new tab, we open a can of worms. Sometimes kids get lost and digging around and get distracted. So the fact that we can keep them in Google Docs to work on their work, whatever it is that they're doing, is right there in that add-on menu. So I hope that it's still there. I I think maybe 
just hasn't quite made the transition yet, or maybe they're being forced to update it. But I'm, hey, I'm with you on Wolfram Alpha. Like, I'm, I'm looking at some of these screenshots. I haven't used it, but um, being able to search through all of the data that it has and then drag images and drag tables and all that right into your doc, that's, that is really pretty cool. So if you teach higher level math or science and you have never explored Wolfram Alpha, whether you're using the add-on or not, you definitely want to go check that one out. Yes. Yeah, totally agree with that. All right. Last one. This one is another one of those simple ones that that adds um, kind of a, a nice extra functionality or kind of a different functionality. This one has to do with fonts. So um, this add-on is called Extensus Fonts. And if you've ever worked with the fonts in uh, Google Docs or Slides or whatever, th- this one's for Google Docs. We'll talk about that. You hit your drop down and you can see the fonts that you have available, but you can't really see all of them. And it's kind of hard to scroll through them and it's hard to sort and all of that. Um, so the font drop down, it's like it's utilitarian. It does what it's supposed to do, but it's not easy. If you want better functionality, you got to check out Extensus Fonts. So here's what it does. What Extensus Fonts does is it puts all of the fonts over in a sidebar and you can sort them and you can go by all fonts or the display or the handwriting, the serif, the sans serif, and then you can even sort them by alphabetical, by popularity, by trending. And so they all show up right over here in your sidebar. And so all you've really got to do there is you highlight some text and then you click on the font. So if you are a fontaholic and you like to use all of the different fonts that you can, I know it's not good to like overuse them, but if you want to look for just that right one, it's so much easier to sort and apply a new font when you've got this um, add-on open. That one's called Extensus Fonts. Yes, I do love me some fonts. So I know teachers will geek out over this one and it may be one that... You don't want to show your kiddos at first. I can just imagine oh, how yeah, much time that. can be lost in searching the fonts, but we'll leave that one up to you. And of course, if you want links to any of these add-ons that we've been talking about, they will be in our show notes at googleteachertribe.com slash 91. There's a letter in your mailbox. Hey, you know what? This is all your mail. Hey, maybe I'll give you a call sometime. You've got mail. All right, Tribe, it's mailbag time, and we're starting to get some of these messages from you. Um, You know, some of these voice messages, you're leaving us these speak bite messages that we can play. Um, We're getting some emails. We always love to hear from you, Um, the cool things that you're doing, the things that you have discovered that you'd like to share with the Tribe, um, and of course, your questions. In our last episode, we were talking about Google Classroom updates, and we were talking about the grades feature. And, you know, we, we just had a question for you. Are you using it? Um, you know, what do you think about it? And so we got a message from Lindsay Shields and she gave us her, um, you know, sort of like her experience with it. So here's what Lindsay writes. She said, I had to comment on the new Google Classroom updates after listening to your podcast this week. My district beta tests the new updates to Google. So I've been using the grades feature since last spring. I love it. The grades page allows me to easily see who has turned in assignments, which assignments need grading, and who has turned work in late. I no longer have to click on each assignment in Classroom for this. I also import grades from Classroom into our student information system, which they use ARIES. It is truly a time saver. To effectively do this, you need to first create the assignment both in Classroom and ARIES. It helps to have the same number of points in both Classroom and ARIES, just to keep everything you know, the same. Once you have graded the assignment, you need to return it into classroom and then that makes the grades official. And then once you've done that, you go to your grade book and your SIS, your student information system. And she says, it is truly magic. It has saved me so much time. I use forms for bell work and I can import the scores from forms to classroom, return the grades to the students and then import the scores into Aries. I can grade several classes of warmups in minutes. I also just started using the rubric feature, and so far it is easy to create a rubric and score the assignment. So there you go. If you are interested in this grades feature and you're wondering, hey, does anybody actually use this? And if so, what do you think? Lindsay's saying she loves it and it has saved her a whole bunch of time. This is really interesting. So I'm not that familiar with the Aries gradebook, but 
I don't like the fact that she still has to create the assignment yeah. in both places. So I'm hoping that that may be a temporary thing or it may just be that particular grade book. So if anyone is doing this and that is something you have to duplicate, I'm very curious if that's working for you. Okay, I'm going to shift gears and we have a speak pipe message. Yes, we love speak pipes here. And this is from Beth Evans. Beth is asking us about some things that she's teaching her English learners, her English language learners, and she wants to teach them how to fill out forms in everyday life, name, age, birthday, gender, etc. So she is asking us about the autofill feature and kind of how that's interacting with things. So take it away, Beth. I am teaching beginning English learners, and one of the things that I need to teach them is how to fill out forms in everyday life. The things like your name, your age, your birth date, your gender, all of those fun things. But my problem is that once they have filled out my Google form one time, then they have the option of using autofill. And I'm wanting to find a way to shut this off because they, in They've somehow figured out how to autofill everything. And so they're not really getting experience on filling out these forms unless I go make paper forms. I really don't want to have to do that. And so I'm wondering if anybody out there knows how I can set my forms so that autofill is not an option. Thanks so much for your help. So immediately when I hear this, what I'm thinking she's referring to is the autofill that's actually in Chrome or whatever browser she happens to be using. So Beth, the first thing I, I thought of was one, if you're teaching this and you don't want to mess with going into settings with every student, because that, that could be a little hairy, you could have them open an incognito window where that form will not autofill. So um, you can open incognito by going to your three dots and you'll see new incognito window or shift control in and open that up. The other thing is you may not have access to that for your students. So that's disabled at a lot of schools and I understand why, but incognito would be a great little band-aid to help you get that clean environment where they're not getting that autofill option. If not, you can go into the settings in Chrome and change this. And this may be something that your administrators can actually do for you by going to the three dots, going to settings on the left-hand side, you're going to see autofill. And that's where you can go to that little drop down, which is most likely the addresses and more where it pre-fills that information for you and just turn that little toggle switch off. So I think that will help solve a lot of the issues. But again, I don't know what age you're working with, but I, I imagine if you're already working with some ELLs that this might be a little bit more difficult. So uh, give us give us a ring back, leave us another voice message and let us know if you were able to resolve this issue. Let's take a look at what's been happening over on the blog. So on Shake Up Learning, I posted at the time of this recording, it was this week, but a new blog post and podcast episode of the Shake Up Learning show on nine ways to improve student writing with Google Docs. So especially if you're a writing teacher, you're going to love it, but everybody has kids writing. So there are tips in there that can help everyone. And I also just wanted to mention really quick, if you're interested in the Shake Up Learning Fall Book Study, it starts on September 26th. So now's the time to jump in. We've got links in our show notes, or you can go to shakeuplearning.com slash book study to nice. get all the info on good the free stuff. book study. All right. So I've got a post to share with you real quick. This is an updated post. Um, one of the more popular ones on my blog, uh, it started out as 20 practical ways to use Google Forms. And hey, we've been talking about Google Forms in this episode. Uh, 20, it was 20 practical ways to use Google Forms in class and school. Now it's up to 25. So um, we've taken this post, um, added some new things to it, updated to make sure everything is ready to go. And so if you're looking at forums and you're thinking, hey, I want to improve my skills, kind of like uh, improve my chops on, on Google Forms, then this is a place where you can get some practical ideas. So uh, you can get the link to that and to any of the stuff that Casey was sharing as well, as well as anything. And this episode, minus the meat app. 
Yes, I'm still coming back to that on the show notes at googleteachertribe.com slash 91. All right, Tribe, that wraps up yet another episode, episode 91 of the Google Teacher Tribe podcast. Hopefully you've got some ideas of some ways that you can use some add-ons. You know, add-ons aren't anything you have to be afraid of. It's something you just turn them on and it kind of gives some of your your tools that you know and love some superpowers. Um, so definitely go check those out. Um, we also love to hear from you. Have we mentioned that, how much we love to hear from you? We love to hear your voice and let the tribe hear from you too. Of course, please do connect with us on the GT Tribe hashtag as well. Yes, and thank you for all of the reviews, Matt. I I just noticed the other day, I think we were over like 234 five-star reviews on iTunes. So thank you so much for all of the support and helping us get to episode 91 as well as so close to 1 million. So we want to hear from you. How should we celebrate and how can we get you involved? So until next time. We'll see you on the next episode of the Google Teacher Tribe podcast. Bye, all Thanks for listening to the Google Teacher Tribe podcast. Keep up with every new episode by subscribing on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, and by visiting googleteachertribe.com. Get in on the conversation on Twitter by using the hashtag GTTribe. Until next time, keep harnessing the G Suite power, and may the Googles be with you. about huh. this or the meet app <laughs> we will have the links in our show notes for you i am really interested well. in learning more about this meet app <laughs> see i'm already i'm already starting to think about what would the little <laughs> icon look like see i can imagine like a t-bone steak you know oh, but i don't know if that would fit with the material theme with um with google mm-hmm. so we're gonna have to work on that i think yeah may, maybe a fillet yeah. so it's a nice round geometric you know, yeah, red, yeah, that would totally yeah fit. there we go oh my goodness we need to make this happen <laughs> all right